guys, welcome back to another episode of award show coverage. This is my Pam tonight. Um, yes, welcome back to another episode of award show coverage here with me, Pam. Um, tonight or today, we're gonna do the iHeart Music Awards that happened last night. Um, the red carpet was like, meh. a lot of the celebrities did not tag or like say who they're wearing so we're just gonna do what we can maybe I can tag it like up here maybe I'm trying to do the coverage too soon after but I want it to be like timely so it's relevant so we get the views because I'm trying to get a thousand subscribers you understand so yeah so we're here and I'm gonna do the red carpet first first up we have Meg the Stallion in an all gold look it's like a uh, club dress you remember we had the like sheer little cutouts and whatnot she looked cute um took a bunch of shots by herself and then she came with her boyfriend party party and Fontaine of backing it up fame as well and he had on like a little tan uh, they kind of look matchy it looked like hood prom so there you go for that the couple um this is though i will say maybe the first time i've seen meg on the carpet where she looks like authentically herself like she wasn't trying or she wasn't like trying to go too hard with the look or do something outside like to make a statement she just looks very comfortable and natural uh the dress is short as all outside but still like she looks comfortable and this looks like super put together so maybe she should just go for this instead of the bigger fashion look because too like when you have a body when you're kind of a thick girl like some of those dresses make you look kind of frumpy so it is better for her to just do the body adi adi type of looks and be out here and stun on us i like it demi lovato came in a purple like suit look by dundas she looked cute she was one of the only people that they tagged her look um I, I believe she was there to do the elton john tribute because he won the icon award last night and we'll cover the awards after the carpet mgk and megan fox came to slay again um i checked both their stylist pages no looks yet the shoes on megan fox though are for sure amina mwadi and i think that the pink outfit is area i could be wrong but i think it's area um, MGK is in a full like 10 man suit shorts. It looks good though. So I cannot be mad at that. And they too gave me, you know, prom. So LL Cool J came straight from the house, straight from the kitchen in a full flat suit look. I guess that's appropriate for his time in hip hop and stuff like that. But just, I don't know. It didn't give me red carpet. It looked like he had, he stopped at this awards on the way home from the gym. I don't know. He looked clean, he looked put together, but still, like, this was not red carpet, a little cool J. Lil Nas X, again, got the memo from MGK on the 10 man look. His was kind of, like, better executed, though, if I can say that. He had, like, the accessories, he had the futuristic haircut going on with the levels, and then he had a white so far back with some white um, platform boots. He just looked very cool, very put together, um, like the editorial version of Lil Nas and how he usually presents. So I like this a lot. I'm so glad the cowboy times are over because I was tired of seeing him, like, having to wear that aesthetic for the song he was pushing old town road though so i totally feel that but i'm glad like that part is done in the montero era we were given like uh space fairly odd parents but rich so i like that doja cat came in a full sheer look by brandon maxwell if you are a fan of this channel you know i love brandon maxwell he actually commented on one of my reviews for the show when i first started this channel so tear me and brandon have a special place we're connected um doja cat looks every bit the superstar every bit amazing in this look i also like how it's styled with the panties and then not, not necessarily a bra but the fabric like draped appropriately so it's still classy also on jn style i think that's the person that does doja cat's hair on his page on instagram he has a video of her like posing and I want to be that efficient with my posing. Like, she got, like, 30 poses off. And it was just very subtle. Like, she's been practicing this her whole life. Like, she's going to get all the correct angles. You probably will not see a bad red carpet shot of Doja Cat because she just looked so professional. So, applause to you again. I, I'm just never not amazed by Doja Cat. From her looks to her performance to just now, like I said, her photo shoot abilities. I'm just, she's that girl. Usher came and looked cute with his new girlfriend who was with child they were wearing all black again the looks aren't tagged they look very cute uh usher was there and he performed as well uh he did a really good job i think this was more of a preview for his um upcoming residency at caesar's palace that got pushed back because of covid so it was like he did a melody of the i mean he did a 
you know, mashup of the hits. The only thing that threw me off was the outfit. It was giving me Liberace and maybe because he's but shorts. And maybe because he's going to Vegas, like he's trying to get that costumey, like set design type thing. I don't know, but I just was not here for the brocade, shorts and cape. Usher is not that man. Like I've never seen Usher. I've been seeing all the music videos since, uh, you know, you make me want to leave the one you with. And just, I've never seen Usher in no outfit like that. So I don't want him in his old age to like, y'all be styling him like something he's not. No, Usher, is, he's grown. He's not old. Let's not do that. Okay. Performance was great. Dancing was great. Lil John got the beat to make your booty up. It was amazing. So go and buy your tickets if there are any left for that Usher residency at Sears House because it's going to be popping. Robin Thicke came with his cute son, Julian. I believe this is the Paula Patton son because he's bigger. They look very cute. Um, Julian in the red suit, Robin Thicke in his suit. They look good. They look like money. Her. Her on the red carpet because she came to pay tribute to Elton John who won the Icon Award. In a beautiful black look, kind of bell bottoms, Elton John tribute shirt, glasses. Just, I love the look, ponytail again. Fire look, like I told y'all, her is coming into her own with her sexiness and her appeal and her fashion decisions. She killed that Elton John tribute. I'm not going to talk about the other people because I was not as here for that. So we're going to focus on the good. Her slayed every single bar, every single line on Benny and the Jets. Benny! She killed it. The piano, the guitar, the I, okay, the performance outfit. Elton John was grooving in the back. Like, he was singing his own song. Baby, like, yeah, girl, do that. Little Nas X with his, um, when he was presenting the award, giving Elton John all his propers and received that same love back. Elton John said, Little Nas, you got balls of steel. We just talked about this last week on the show. That performance, that SNL performance, baby. There's so many, like, gay people, whatever, non-binary people in Hollywood. And for years and years, they have chose to not, like, fully expose that part of themselves for fear of and for lack of acceptance. And Lil Nas just came all the way up to the front. Like, if my family wasn't not about to judge me for being gay, I'm not about to let the public judge me either. And I'm going to live in my true authentic self. Okay, whether that be wearing cowboy outfits, whether that be wearing silver, carrying a mini so far back, I'm going to do me. doesn't make me any less of a man, doesn't make me any less of a human, but this is my art and this is the way I would like to express myself. And I love that because it's supposed to be about individuality. It is supposed to be about creativity. And like for so long, everybody's been on this assimilation, like doing the same thing, sounding the same, wearing the same, and just. I'm happy Lil Nas came, kicked that whole front door in, and is getting props from the legends on doing so as well. So everybody knows it. Everybody sees it. Keep on fighting the fight. I'm not sure who Ava Max is. I haven't heard of her or her music, but she gave a very avant-garde type of look on the carpet that caught my attention. It's like a silver bedazzled top with these red corseted more than high waist pants and these disco boots. Now, I would not recommend anybody else try this type of look. Um, she has the hair, the makeup, the style to pull it off. It looked very cool on her, but I cannot say that this look would look as cool on somebody else. So Ava Max, excellent job. Nelly. Now Nelly came, I assume he was a presenter because I did not watch the full show. I watched the performances and I watched the red carpet. Nelly came in this biker jacket, which I'm not mad at. I got two myself. But in some leather shorts, Miss Jackson, why did you let Nelly wear the leather shorts out? Now, from the waist up, he looks cute. Nelly is too fine to be out in some leather shorts, Miss Jackson. You know that. And maybe you just don't want your man to be as fine because you don't want him to be getting picked up on by the others out here or also looking to live a similar lifestyle with Miss Jackson. It is your duty. It is your charge to make sure that Nelly is fly at all times. We are depending on you as, you know... I don't know what Nelly fans call themselves, whatever, but just for the sake of sweatsuit album, for the sake of country grammar, don't let him come out here like this, Miss Jackson. Just say something. Hey, sweetie, baby, I got some pants for you right here. Work your feminine wiles. And some ones on them. Like, Nelly is too fine and he's too grown for this. I... I don't want to see it. Miss Jackson, I want you to be in charge of this. 
French Montana. Now, French Montana came and he looks very cute. And I remember in a time when French Montana was kind of borderline fine, you know. But now with this hair that everybody is doing, I believe it is taken away. You know, everybody don't got this right bone structure and the right head shape and certain hairstyles. Like, I can never go bald like Amber Rose. And French Montana looks better with a fade than with these braids. From the, you know, line up down, he looks incredible. I'm here for the weight loss, the fitness journey, all that. But just, I don't like that, French Montana. Again, you are too grown, you're too fine, you got too much money to be doing what's happening from your lineup above. Go and bring it on back and just, skirt. come on, help us. Roddy Rich came. Another one, chopped off that hair. I love it. I love a man with a clean fade. If you got some waves, you can muster some waves, get some waves going. But these alternative hairstyles on men, I don't like it. I don't like it. It takes me back to the Coolio times, which is a dark, ugly, unattractive, unfashionable place. And I know everybody wants to make it like it's pro-black and all. It's not. It's not. It's pro looking a mess. And I'm not here for it. I don't like it. Roddy Rich looks... 20 times better, 30 times more attractive with this fade. And I'm sure he looks better in the morning as well when he wakes up because he don't got to pick out, pull out, whatever hairstyle he had before. Came hard in the, I believe those are Balenciaga because they, they had the matching sets, but he just wore the pants. Looks beautiful. Roddy Rich been having money for a little while now. He's using it correctly. I want more of this. Amazing, Roddy Rich. You should have hit the carpet. The only thing I don't necessarily like about your look was the tennis shoes. Because, again, I feel like we got money now, Roddy. And there's a whole plethora of shoes that you could have chosen at Balenciaga to go with this look. I'm not mad at it. You're from Compton, so I see you. I understand. But we just need to elevate the feet. Bring it on up to the rest of the outfit. And you'll be golden. The weekend, the weekend did not do the, the carpet, but I guess they're covering his look from the stage, his performance with Ariana Grande for Save Your Tears, which was incredible. Um, pretty sure this is Ariana Grande's first performance, first time popping out since her recent marriage to Mr. Gomez, the real estate man. Um, their wedding looked very cute. She released a picture. She had a beer wang uh, look. Lil Bill inspired by Funny Face because she was once the face of Givenchy, like Audrey Hepburn. Great tribute. I loved it. She looked great. It looked like she had it in her house, too, so way to cut out the drama and make it easy. I am not a fan of a circus-type atmosphere wedding. It's too much. It's too much pressure. Um, so great job, Ariana. The song, incredible. You hit every note. You came out. You, you did the Mariah Carey call. The weekend was even impressed. Um, save your tears for another day. I'm sure y'all are going to get platinum or more status for that the weekend owns the radio i'm so happy to see him get his just do at the iheart music awards as well he picked up some looks so great job and ariana grande for her stage performance had on a purple look like a type of disco top skirt i'm sure she had brian atwood heels because she's very small and she loves a elevated look her and luxury law so great job performances i have to talk about miss doja cat now, I said last time that uh, the Kiss Me More with SZA was a bit lackluster due to the outfit selection. I did not like those rave um, pant extenders on the calves. I didn't like that. But she came back like she watched my video personally and took it as disrespect. Ultra hard with this Say So slash um, Streets performance on iHeart. It was like a Field of Dreams, E.T. type of thing. Um, the aliens were coming and she did say so a little bit in a totally different way. That's another thing I love about Doja Cat. Her ability to change the songs to fit the situation. She's performed say so a billion times and each time it has been different and equally entertaining. Sometimes more entertaining than the last. So, love this mashup of say so with Streets. Um, the dancing was on point. The look was on point. Uh, the singing, the all the movement with the dance, I love it. The production value, the dancers. I think that people kind of sleep on the elevation that having like a group of dancers brings to the show. I'm sure watchers and lovers of Beyonce definitely pick up on that. It just takes it to a higher level. You can dance up there yourself and kill all the choreography and hit every boom cack. 
but it's not necessarily going to be the same as a group of people doing it in unison. And maybe let's not give Beyonce just the credit for that. That's like a Michael Jackson type of takeaway, right? Janet Jackson, they got an army of dancers. And it's just something about a group of people hitting moves. It just looks higher, elevated. So, great job, Doja Cat. Your performance is unmatched. I cannot name, forget just a rap girl, another pop girl doing it on your level. So, continue the good work. Um, I said it. I say it over and over, my money is on Doja Cat. She's going to be around. She's going to be a household name uh, for years and years to come. So this is just her building up her icon status, and I'm loving every second of it. Excited for Planet Her and where that takes us visually. Oh, Silk Sonic, a.k.a. Anderson Pack and Bruno Mars, they had a crazy performance. Made it like their vibe. I don't know if that's 70s or 80s, um, like a club. They have this, the crowd is going crazy, singing the whole hook. They barely have to do any work when it comes to that. Anderson Pack is so, so good. And, you know, Bruno Mars lives in his costume theater bag. But just to see Anderson Pack on that level as well, it's very, very entertaining. I'm sure their concerts are going to be off the chain. I know Bruno Mars sells out stadiums and arenas. So just with this Silk Sonic, everybody 30 and up is going to be in the building. Okay, with their girlfriend, baby mama, side chick. It's going to be amazing. I hope they do multiple shows in the larger markets so we all have a chance to go. Uh, yeah, I just can't say enough positive things about Silk Sonic. They take me to a, you know, bygone era with their songs and their presentation and all that. So just stellar. Now we're going to go over the awards. And like I said, I didn't watch it, so we're going to read it off. But I do like these songs and these people, so check it out. Song of the Year is Blinding Lights by The Weeknd, which is much, much, much deserved. I don't know how he lost it at that other award show because I was in the airport in Qatar. And do you know the Muslims coming out of their headphones in security? You know, you got to take your stuff off. They're, oh, I'm blinded by the light. I'm hearing that little running around the video game soundtrack. It was, it was incredible. And I was just like, dang, the Muslims out there like The Weeknd too? Like, okay. Global status worldwide. So Blinding Lights is the song of the year, zero competition. Female artist of the year is Dua Lipa. I remember first seeing Dua Lipa, um, her videos playing inside the mall in the food court. And then I would be in the gym and they would play some of Dua Lipa songs. But when she came out with this new project with the, I would have stayed at home cause I was doing better alone. Nobody's fucking with that. And then she put the baby on that remix. I want you, I want you baby, I'm sugar boo. I'm levitated. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The disco diva that is Dua Lipa is undefeated with that album. There are so many good songs. I cannot say enough. So she is much deserving of this female artist of the year. Male artist of the year of, is, of course, The Weeknd because I'm going through withdrawals. Maybe you can help me look. Everybody loves the songs. It is great. And then he came out, Save Your Tears with Ariana Grande. He just... He don't miss. Best collaboration went to Beyonce and Megan Ford, the Savage remix. And I'm happy that the girls are continuing to pull in the awards off of that. And Beyonce, on her little snippet, um, Michelle Williams from Destiny's Child posted like they were checking in. Maybe they were hanging out because there was also a picture later on posted of Kelly Michelle and Kelly's new baby. And Beyonce said on the snip, on the snip of their conversation that she's cooking up new music. So... We're ready for that. I hope this is Beyonce music, not Beyonce and Jay-Z music, because we had that, and we're good on that right now. Beyonce, what do you got for us? And I've seen Beyonce, like, sending flowers to Kosh Page. I've seen her, I think, where she was working with Nigel Charles. So she's working with the young girls, too. I'm happy to hear. I want to see this new era of Beyonce. What does she have in store for us? I'm sitting on eggs. I mean, my hands are on pins and needles. Best pop album was Folklore. I listen to Folklore and I don't see it. But, you know, Taylor, she moves around a certain way and she gets her thing. So I'm not going to hate on it. But just, no, I listen to Folklore, the whole thing. And it's not even up there with Taylor's other projects. I'm just saying, like, I don't know. Alternative rock album of the year was Machine Gun Kelly, Tickets to My Downfall. Um, I don't listen to a whole, whole bunch of rock. I like the hits. So... 
we're not gonna judge Machine Gun Kelly. I like his outfit choices. I love that he's got a baby with Fifi Dobson and this new relationship with Megan Fox, I think is cute too. So I'm supporting that. I don't know about this. Tickets in my downfall. Machine Gun Kelly has been off of my music listening list since he came at Eminem for no reason. And Eminem put him politely back into the trash can. So that's where we are with that here on this show. But if you like Machine Gun Kelly and you have anything positive to say, because we only doing positive here, Put it in the comments. Let me know what song I should check out. Dance album of the year went to Diplo. And this is why I was saying on a previous episode about Amorphous and being branding himself as like an entertainer, not just a producer, DJ, what have you, is because of situations like this. DJ Mustard could have easily came and got one of these awards himself had he started earlier billing himself as DJ Mustard, like the entity, the artist, and not just the producer, Mustard on a Beat. So, begin with the end in mind, children, because look at Diplo out here cleaning up these awards for just beats that he making. He not just singing no songs, he not popping no boogie, he not. He just in the studio, pressing buttons, doing things, coming up with beats, and then selecting people to put on it, like DJ Khaled. So, again, DJ Khaled, for years and years, all we do is win. DJ Khaled could have been branding himself as a standalone. He's doing it now, and he's doing an excellent job. That's why I give DJ Khaled all the props in the world, but we just need more of our people. To get on the DJ Khaled, DJ Mustard, Amorphous wave. I don't even necessarily want you to call yourself a DJ. Because you could just be Mustard, you could just be Khaled. Like Amorphous is Amorphous. You got me? Pay attention, kids. The dance song of the year is Roses by St. John. Now, I didn't really know about St. John, but I've been following him on Instagram for a long time. Just because how he looks and how he presents, his aesthetic is very cool. So then when the music started to happen, I was like, oh, snap, this is cool. Like, I didn't know about this. So St. John Roses, go check it out. Watch the video. Follow him online. He serves a mean look and just get on the wave. Hip Hop Album of the Year is Lil Baby, My Turn. I feel like Lil Baby was all over the place, so that is much deserved. Um, Hip Hop Song of the Year is The Box by Roddy Rich, which, duh, is on the radio all day, every day here in California. Coming up to Coop at the lot. I'm a fuck, 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 the box is crazy. Um, I actually got to see Roddy Rich perform the box at the TDE Christmas before the pandemic, and it was incredible. He's a he's a cool performer. Uh, so go see Roddy Rich, and hopefully there's some type of tour. People are putting back out music festivals now, like we're gonna have Rolling Loud, um, and Roddy Rich is gonna be there among a bunch of other people, J Cole, uh, Kid Cudi, different stuff. So I'm happy to see these people. I want to see them perform. Out. I hope COVID has not put a damper on like the hypeness and the performance feel because rappers already or not, they don't care, girl, when it comes to the performance. So I just hope that maybe people have been in some type of boot camps during COVID so they can really put on the show. Best new hip hop artist also went to Roddy Rich, which I think is much deserved. R&B album of the year went to Janae Aiko for Chilumbo. I love that. I don't want to be negative whatsoever I, and Janae looked very cute she accepted the war from home I'm not sure why she didn't go because it was in LA but just maybe she was busy I don't know Chilombo is a, a great great album but I am kind of sad that Kalani is not getting no love for it was good until it wasn't that was an incredible album start to finish no skips all the vibes from serial lover to hate the club I just I'm kind of sad that she's not getting any props for this. And maybe she'll come back even harder on the next one. But to me, it was good until it wasn't. It was definitely up there and deserving of awards. So where's that? And then Kalani's been out for a long time. So it's like she doesn't qualify for no Best New Artist. Like, how is she, when is she going to get awards? Maybe she don't care because she's on her health and wealth and knowledge itself. But I care. I'm here to kick in the doors, waving the fofo. For Kalani, for her awards. What's going on? Good job, Janae. I love it. I love the little crystal seed that you got at your house as well. Very cute. I love that you and Sean are also on this manifestation, crystals, spiritual alignment, feng shui in the home. I love that for y'all. I think it's so cute. Go Crazy is the R&B song of the year. Again, much deserved. From California to Tanzania, people playing Go Crazy in the club. Um... When I was away, I heard Go Crazy every single night in the club, regardless of the neighborhood or where we were at. So just Chris Brown is a machine. And anybody that Chris Brown sticks to him or lets into the two-door coupe 
they're going straight to the top with Chris Brown. Young Thug did amazing on this song too. That's not to take nothing away from him, but just Chris Brown is the machine. He drive. He will drive some shit to number one. You understand? Bet your money on Chris Brown. R and B artist of the year is her. I love that because her has come hard this year. Comfortable, damage. Um, I can't breathe. The um, Judas and the Black Messiah song just. Her is making it happen. Another person that does not miss. You know, even my grandma likes her. I come to my grandma's house. She watching The View. Her is on it. She, oh, I like it. I like her. I like it. It's upset that her name, that she calls herself her. But besides that, she loves everything about it. So, her, you got all the ages on lock. Best new R&B went to Snoo Allegra. I love that because I Want You Around is a beautiful song. And then, um, what is it? Dying for Your Love. Yes, that was a good one too. Snoo also is like a model. She was in the Mugle show. So, banging a body, banging face, banging walk. And she could sing a song. Like, somebody wipe her up. Social Star went to the new girl on the block, Olivia Rodrigo. I love her song, Do You Get Deja Vu? It's so good. She has some other good songs on this new album, too. It's like teen angsty, broke up for the first time, your first heartbreak type. So just go listen to Olivia Rodrigo. I'm sure the high school girls and the middle school girls are having a time, the time of their life with this. Because I definitely would be. TikTok Song of the Year, Titanium song of the year and titanium artist of the year i don't know what the titanium stuff means but they're all the weekend blinding lights because the song was incredible and that's how you know like we discussed before that the grammys were hating there's something going on there underlying i don't know if the weekend broke one of their daughter's hearts if he slept with somebody's wife if he didn't give somebody free concert tour tickets even though there was no tour um if he didn't let somebody come to the super bowl with him i'm not sure but there's definitely something there Okay, but Billboard gave Weekend his love last week. This week, I Heart is showing no appreciation. So, The Weekend is getting his flowers while he can smell them. It's just the Grammys that needs to get on board. Again, I want to reiterate, where was Victoria Monet? Please invite Victoria Monet. Stop doing this because she could have also performed. Jaguar was incredible. She could have lit up their stage. And Kehlani does a mean dance and sing, the choreography on deck, the outfits, the transition. So just expand the palette. BET, y'all better have something for Kehlani. BET, y'all better have something for Victoria Monet. Unless I don't know what I'm going to do. But I feel like I can go to your office and I can put up signs. You know? So be on the lookout for it. That's it for my iHeart coverage. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with me. See y'all next time. Bye.